see you. All right. Hey, that looks like a five. Almost. Is that your this normal is the, the original one that I will be tied. Sorry, it's jumping. My cable's jumping a little bit. I'll try to stay off it, but uh, it's got the goose by it, uh, tan for a tail, white for wings, and then some uh, uh, ostrich, not ostrich, peacock pearl as well. So this will be the first one that I'll tie up. I need to really adjust my camera. It's not that short. It's a little bit longer. So get a hook out. Could have prepped this beforehand. But yeah, this is a fun little pattern. I would say for what we do, this is going to be about intermediate because the goose bites could be a little bit of a pain. Sorry, I should have had this set up. Some kind of stabilizer on there so it doesn't bump so much. All right. Uh, I don't know if I have a. I'm using the nano silk again. Let me see if I could. Don't. I'll take it off at the end afterwards so you guys could see. Uh, if I'm doing flies that have a lot of materials, I really like this red for the fact that it's very strong, but it doesn't have a lot of bulk. So if you start making a lot of wraps, it's not gonna, you know, mess up your fly because you your thread is getting too much material on it. So what's right the there, denier on it? 18 on. So what you're looking at there is let me see if I can find a normal red real quick. So what I was using this past weekend, you could see the difference. Yeah. So this yeah. a lot thicker what you normally use. And then you could see the uh Semperfly 18 is a lot smaller, but as strong or maybe stronger than uh, this pink because I could sit down and really could start cranking on this. Oh, I cut it on the. Oh, cool. At least I broke it. So now I could show you the actual thread real quick. Oh, this is a nano. Oh, my bad, folks, that this is not nano. Where'd my nano silk go? All right, I'm just going to swap it to uh, brown real quick, because I do have brown. But hopefully you can see this. There it is. 12 watt Semperfly nano silk. I don't know what I was using before, but again, very thin. Get some of this on. Try to crank a little bit, but yeah, this will, you could bend the hook with that. So very thin. And so that way, if you're really putting on a lot of materials, you want to wrap it, you're not going to bulk anything up. So what I will do, though, and it'll take me a little bit long because this is thinner, I'm trying to make a little dam at the end there. 
which will help make the goose biot flare out a little bit. As you can see, I've been wrapping a while and that still doesn't hold much. All right. First off, we'll see if this is a better camera. Okay. Goose by it. I have this ginger, which is a brown. And then I've already taken white out of the package. And the cool stuff with this is when you try to, what you're trying to use is the bias. And as you kind of fold it over, you can kind of see the bias that you're going to need. So you're just going to cut off two of those. And we will tie those in. Some people tie both in at the same time. I always found it a lot easier to take your time and do it separate. When you see them, they do have a little curve to it. So you want it to kind of curve away from the hook. And you just want to kind of line it up to what you think would be a right size of a tail. Just tie that in. Do the other side. Again, you just want to kind of match what you have, make it look proportionate. So there's your tail. And you could see where I had that thread bulk up that kind of helps splay it out a little bit. Wrap all that material and make sure it looks good. The next thing I'm going to do is grab a little gold tinsel. Use that to kind of wrap the body of the peacock pearl because peacock pearl is very delicate. And so this will help stiffen it up a little bit. All right, the next part, peacock curl. So you'll get these clumps of peacock curl. Um, depending on what you're doing, if you're trying to build up a body, go two or three strands. If you're looking for something a little bit smaller, you could get away with one, but I'm gonna pull three strands out. I want this a nice full body. So I got three strands. What I'll try to do is line them up best I can. Now, if you could kind of see there's that blue where they kind of glue everything together, you want to get rid of that. So all you have is the peacock curl. I've added in. Yeah. Right to the tail. I'm going to do a half hitch. Just kind of as my saving point. 
with my rope tating device. I'm back to using the peak right now uh, because my Norvice takes up too much room when I'm trying to do these videos. I still mm. like it, but smaller size. Hmm. place for that. We can go back again if you wanted, if you want to make it nice that and bushy. Good. So that looks like a nice bushy yeah. body. If you do only one, it looks really scarce. And so peacock curl isn't that expensive. So do two or three. Some people try to get a little fancy here because they know peacock curl is delicate. So they'll just kind of pop it. I always, I tried that one time and it all came unraveling apart. So I don't do that. Now the cool thing with nano silk again, it is so thin that you could, if you wanted, you could even go through it. As you see, I'm not crushing any of those fibers, but it, it's locking it in. Nice. That's why I really like nano silk. Because right there, you saw that I was able to bend the hook with this. And now I'm actually wrapped it to kind of protect that as well. So that's been so far has been my favorite thread. You gotta be careful on sometimes using it. Like if you do any foam body flies, if you pull too hard, this will cut right through it. So now I'll use, give a little decoration. And this is the holographic is supposed to give it a neat little color to it and give it it's straight, but you could do it a little bit with nano silk as well. Right. Next up is the white biop wings. Again, some people are pretty good where they could do. Uh, both of them at the same time. When you're first starting off, I would definitely just do one at a time. It's easier to control. And I still just do one at a time. So again, it has an up and a down. So now I want to kind of, once I get this one and I'll show you, it's you uh, want the length of the body, but you want it at a little bit of an angle as well. Straight to the... There we go. So you want a little bit off in an angle like that. So you don't have to fight this tag with the second one, just cut this. This is probably the hardest part of this fly, but with a little bit of practice, you'll be okay. So you're looking for the crisscross. It's a little bit off, but not too awfully bad. But if you were going for that tying competition, that would be docked against you. Whose scissors are you using? The bias? The white? No, no, the scissors, your cutters. 
Oh, scissors, cuticle scissors. So you can see it oh, okay. has a little bend. It's, I mean, really tight when it gets in there. I mean, mm -hmm. there was my thumb. So it's very cuts to a point where I like these. It's, you get these at Walgreens or CVS or any place. These are always been my favorite. It's just okay. cuticle where they've got a little bend to it so you can really get in there. And gotcha. Because it looks like I had a really super fine point. Yes, they do. And you could really hurt yourself with those. So be careful. But that's why I like them yeah. because I could, you know, make the cut I want. Yeah. I'm, the reason so, why I asked, I got some Adramas and I don't like them and they won't respond because they say 30 day warranty. Can't even get them to respond. Yeah. These are, you know, $5 at yeah. uh, Walgreens and you're good to go. So yep. I'm going to go now. Go ahead. No, no, nothing. I said, yep. Yep. So let's just try to turn on the So to clean up around, you can see where I still have the bias sticking out. Best way to clean that up is just a single piece of peacock curl. Tie that in. With just a single piece, just clean up that area. You okay, Terry? Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. So there's that again. Now, if you want, you could do a few wraps in there with the uh, Semperfly. You won't have any issues with messing up the fly. And do a quick with finish. There we go. So nice. here's a Prince nymph. Will you, will you benefit from solar res at all? You could uh, if uh, if you wanted. You could kind of. You know what? I've got it. Let's just goof around. We've got time. Like I said, the flies are ours. We can do whatever we want. You know, like a Copper John has it where they put that little top on. Clear. Put that upside down. So that kind of creates that cap look. And what's that supposed to be? That The wing case for that? Is that no, what it is? Not. A wing yeah. case? Mm -hmm. Yep. And if you want, then now that's glued in there with epoxy, they'll make it a little bit more durable. And yeah. I do plan on trying to use this fly over the weekend. So maybe the fish will destroy and it'll be fun. So, but again, like I said, I wasn't planning on putting the resin, but, you know, I've always told you this is your fly. You do what you want with it. Then, you know, if you want to change materials, if you don't like peacock curl, I know it could be delicate. They actually have chenille now that is, you know, a good mm -hmm. synthetic version of it. And it's very durable and basically looks the same. And since it's synthetic, it's a little bit more uniform as well. So how are you going to fish that? Under an indicator. Or if you wanted, you could just, you know, cast it out there and let it... Uh, Sink a little bit and start stripping it in. Rick. Yes. Would uh, instead of that gold, uh, the gold. Yeah, the holographic or yeah, the tinsel. The tinsel. 
could, could you just use gold wire? Or, or? Absolutely. You could use wire, I think, on the one that I practiced, but it didn't show up. Let me show you the one. It's funny, my practice one looked better. And I, hopefully, we can get it to shimmer. Here's a boop. Got to crank that in a little bit for it to hold. Let's see if right there was a little bit. I don't know if you could see it. I could get a box yeah. in somewhere. Like right there. Yeah, I, have I can see it. Purple thread, uh, which is, oops, it's better right here. This stuff. So this purple thread I used. Mm -hmm. There you can kind of see it. This stuff I tried, but it just didn't show up good enough. But you can kind of barely see it kind of glimmering in there. It's once in a while oh. you see a flash of purple. I got you. That would work. So and that's a bigger, better looking wing as well. That, that, the biops, the wings and the biops, you really did a good job on it, Mick. Yeah, the second or the first one I did was better than the one I just tied, but yeah, this was this is what it should look like. And again, you could see, you know, right here where I have that thread dam up so it helps splay out the bias a little bit, you know, because there's really nothing holding it against uh the hook shank like that. But yeah, you could see a little bit of the purple trying to shine in there, but it just wasn't enough, but this one and the one I did uh, will be hey, useful. Nick, this is, oh, this is Bill. Have you ever tried dye mat before? Dye mat? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I dye mat. Yeah, you could dye if you're talking about no, the No, no, dye mat. No, no, dye mat. It's a type of thread. It's a, it's a type of thread with metal in it. That okay. it comes multi, yeah, yeah, and you can get it's well, we're not remembering my damn camera. See this right there, yeah. Let me yeah. find my here we are. Let's see if I could bring you in and yeah, spotlight. There you are. Okay, let me see if I can reverse this thing. And, and I'm not, I'm on my table, so it's not the greatest. The stuff is called, uh. Oh heck, I'm not I'm gonna put it under this purple. Sorry guys, I'm kind of fumbling around because I'm playing around with ideas. That called, looks fine. It's called Diamond, right? Okay. And you get it over at Hobby Lobby. And I'm gonna I just put my camera down. I'm gonna get out a white piece of paper and it's got metal in it, and it's really interesting for wrapping bodies. And you've got like golds and greens and uh, everything else. I'm going to get out a piece of white paper here uh, underneath my light. And you can see all my notes here. And I, again, apologize. See, it's a nice, see how it's nice and shiny and red. No, that yeah, would be right perfect. There. And I will be using something similar to that. I don't know what it's called, but I need to make, I'm going to use that as a body for a little bit bigger uh, crackle backs. You know, I'm going to have to make some green ones now that Frank said those were doing good, but I was going to make some different crackle backs as well. Yeah, I've got a green color here for these guys that's like an emerald green. Uh, I mean, that's this color right there. That's their emerald green. Yeah. I've got a red, I've got a gold. I'm just saying you know, it was Something I looked at and I was like, okay, and they got kind of like a copper color. Uh, so I thought, well, it's kind of cheap. At least, you know, it's worth playing with because you can break it off as a single strand and also tie it on as a as a tail material. I'm just thinking, yep. looking at what you're making for the Prince Nim. Sorry, guys. No worries. So this is the other one I told you about. Again, you could do your own flies. So I did a Copper John variant. So it's actually got the copper wire. I did this one a little bit different where I have two different color wires and two different sizes. So looks kind of neat. So there's a silver wire, which is a little bit smaller and then a larger gauge green. Uh, 
again, super durable because now I've given up a little bit on uh, uh, peacock curl and have it a little bit uh, with the copper john. I'd still say that I think after a few fish, the biots would get destroyed, but still fun, you know, fly to try from time to time. So we got time. I'll do this one real quick. Okay, so it'll basically pretty much start the same way. And my nano silk. And this is still the 12 on. I have the 18 as well, which is even thinner. Uh, since this is almost like a Kevlar, I want to kind of demonstrate it. If you try to cut it, it frays. As you can see that, and then it kind of gets a little messed up if you're trying to do it. The best way to do it is just push your scissors through it. And it cuts a little bit better. So if you're using this, you're like, man, the scissors don't want to cut it. You just make a little V with your scissors and then push through it. And then it cuts it a whole lot easier. But Semperfly is still my favorite. It's, uh, I use it for probably about 90% of my flies, but there's times where I don't. Everyone knows I like my little thread jigs, but can you imagine trying to build a body with this? You'd be here, you know, most need a whole spool just to get one body. So I got that kind of brought up. I will get my two biots. A little bit better. It does take practice with biots. So it's kind of fun for me. I haven't done it in a while. So fun to bring out a material I haven't used in a while. All right. Now I'm going to tie in the wire. Uh, it's funny that they both said medium, but two different manufacturers. So you never know what you're going to get. It's like Forrest Gump, but one is much larger. The green is much larger both of these in at the same time. So I stuck that one tail. That's all right. That's what it would look like after the first fish anyway. So now the hardest part is trying to, what I'm doing is stretching it. And the view I'm trying to do is, doesn't matter if green or silver is on what side, but you want to make sure they're both 
going to stay and not cross over. Neat little segment. Get in. Load after both of these separate. Do a little bit of turkey, or not turkey, uh, peacock curl. So I need a, that wire is not going to be a good base. It's almost like trying to tie a material straight to the hook shank. If you try, it's just going to not lay right. So I'm going to use a little bit of peacock curl just to give me a good base. that goes by. Wrap that off. Put that with the white again. Again, I have so many different colors of this by it. You could use it brown on both. You could use white on the tail. It's whatever you want. Because I think I have green and blue and red. Uh, someone makes, they call it like the dark prints, where it's everything is black on it. And it looks really neat. It's okay. That's what I'm looking at right now. So I will continue using a single strand of pink eye curl. Kind of clean that up. But I'm going to do something a little bit different. I think I might have shown you guys this before. Again, peacock curl. It's very delicate. So I don't know if you guys can. Okay, you can see it. I'm looking at this. I'm going to wrap the peacock curl around my thread. So the thread will give it some strength as well. Pinch that all together. Do wraps to kind of clean up that. Oops. See, that's what it does. It will try to break on you. Yeah, and your uh, little uh... Oh, shoot. The little mountain thing is in front of the way. Oops. Yep. Yeah. 
your bobbin holder, your thread rail. I'm going to try to save this because there we go. Yeah, that bobbin holder that's part of the peak. I don't know if it's yeah, too much if I go maybe this way. Yeah, you can kind of see it a little bit. It's so big vice is the bobbin holder that looks like a little mountain peak. So kind of neat. I nearly blocked it again. So it cleans it up a little bit and makes it a little bit stronger. Again, I'm ramping it in there. And this time I'll even pinch down that tail back there. I'm going to use some of the Sally Hansons that are his nails just if you wanted to kind of protect the thread on the ramp, you can kind of see a little the Sally Hansons right there. Just wrap it in there. You don't see it, but it's there. A couple of the finishes. And then, there we go. Got the nice copper job body. Hey, hey, Mick, on that on that wrapping of the uh, the wire, didn't we do a? There was something online that we were talking about about a year ago doing that. Yeah, there's you could do copper uh, johns. No, it wasn't a copper john. It was. Uh, I can't remember the name of the of it, but it was uh, it was online that we had researched it or something. You, I think you and I worked on it together. Oh, is that that? Uh, it was some kind of weave where I tried that and I was not able to do it. That weird crossover weave. Yeah, I I could do it. I got it done. Man, I, it's your step ahead of me. That, no, I not. spent hours on that, and it just stayed ugly. <laughs> the only thing I could really do is I got good at marriaging. That's yeah, good. you do good on that. That is, you know, that the marriage, you know, the that's actually really good on how you do that. Unfortunately, I don't know what to do it on. <clears throat> Yeah. It just sits there. So any questions on that fly? No, I think that's awesome. Yeah. yeah so Again, I... if, if you wanted, everyone knows that I like the white uh, thread jigs. You could find white wire. And so if you wanted even more on, you know, indestructible you can use white wire uh for uh zebra midges you can use black wire they have all the different colors you know it's again have fun with it copper johns are always fun and uh as frank was talking about bennett being flooded that water is going to be moving fast for a while so you want something heavy that's going to drop down quick because if you have a fly and it's kind of on the light side it might not drop down fast enough and so copper johns or you know the prince nymph that i did which was a mix with the copper john that would get down quick the white uh goose by it would kind of at least kind of flash a little bit if you got the gold uh tinsel that would help it a little bit too so you know so when did just, it get flooded it got when flooded did... last weekend and Frank really? was out. Yeah. So I'm heading out tomorrow, but I don't even know. Yeah, you know, I might be able to fish the park. I'm not sure. You know, I'm just kind of no. going out there just to hey, make Rick, a nice. I'll, I'll, I'll have that on my back porch when I I'll take it out of the truck. I'll put it on the back porch if I'm not here. Yeah, I'll grab it then. So I don't know if the daughter's driving in. 
tomorrow or not. I put Terry to sleep. <laughs> it's my yeah, low <laughs> Are are you willing to take an off fly tying question? No, it's not on fly tying. Yes. Okay. You all but build. It's, it's on rod. It's on rod, right? Okay. Um, I'm having a heck of a time working with the small guide and getting them filed down or bent so they actually sit flat on the rod instead of having like a point, you know, hit it um, yeah. and everything else. How do you guys do it? I, I'm having one devil of a time trying to hold on to this thing and not nick it. No, all you got to do, all you got, can I talk, Mick? Yeah, go for it. Okay. When you file it down, do you have a drumming? No, I don't have a drummel. Okay. You got jewel files? I do. They're from uh, 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 Harbor Freight, but, you well, know. That's okay. Just get a piece of wood, like a, a hard piece of wood, lay it down on there, and then go across it with the file while it's laying on the wood. And that way, you kind of level it out a little. Do you understand what I'm saying? Kind of, maybe. Okay, you got a piece of wood. Yeah, yeah. And you put your you put your snake eye on it, and you yeah. just get a file across it while it's resting on the wood. Ah, okay. Okay. And, I... if, and that would that would level it out some. Okay. Okay. And. Uh, and I don't know how you secure it. Once you secure it on the uh, the rod, what I do is I use rubber bands, and then I shoot a laser beam down the rod and line everything up that way. Oh, I don't have one of them. You can go. I just use a piece and get mm -hmm. a little razor uh, laser pencil, and and, and uh, I got one right here. Hang on. How do you use it? I mean, do you set it up so you shoot down through the center? I've just been using a piece of string with a bead on it. I just use fly, uh, regular fly line because oh, fly okay. line, sometimes it's orange and all that. I just, I put, believe it or not, I tape down the rod and then put a vise on each side and just put fly line through it. And if it looks nice and straight, I call it good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what I got, I don't know if you can. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, I got this little, little laser. Okay. Okay. I'd shoot it into the camera, but then everybody would be blinded. Right, and, right. But but you just play this, and you put it at the tip, it and, and, and shoot it down the rod, and you'll be able to see where it's lined up at. Okay. And, and then I just I just line them up, and then you could tape them. Or I use rubber bands, little dental rubber bands. Yep, yep. And and, and it secures it, uh, and you can adjust it as needed. Come down to Missouri, and we'll teach you stuff. Okay. <laughs> the only th I just came up with this just here a little bit ago is that sticky foam. Yeah. I it's, stuck sticky foam on it. So I could hold on to it at least like this. So at least I could pinch it. Okay. You know, that's about the way I could figure out I could hold it because I'm kind of abrading my fingers. You know, you know what I'm talking about. You know, that's a sticky foam, you know, that two millimeter EVA. Yeah. Yeah, just to give me something to grip. The the, the other thing that I, I... I don't know. I just, I'm out of ideas. No, it's just when you, when you want to line them up too... Yeah, you know, I use a uh, an architect uh, uh, to measure distance, and I measure it out, and I mark my distance with a lead pencil. Ah, okay. okay. That way, you know where to start your thread, and and it's accurate all the way down the rod. Mm, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm trying. I'm working on that too. Yeah. It's not been too accurate. I, I'm just curious, you know. 
Uh, I didn't get my rod built, you know, before we all kind of had things change up with John. I mean, John will still answer questions. I'm just, you know, I was just curious to see what you all did. You know what I mean? I use an actual, uh, like a bench grinder, you know, where it's got the two wheels and I have needle nose uh, vice grips and I just touch it and it's like, boom, boom, done. Uh, oh. I've been try trying to do that and I bought my uh, that piece of machinery from Harbor Freight for like 20 bucks. Yeah. And since I do build a couple, it makes it kind of easy. Yeah, I've been spending hours hand filing, and it's like, God, this is a long time. Yeah, I don't have the patience for that. It's, I rather like be tying, uh, you know, the guides and stuff like that. Uh, the sanding part doesn't do anything for me, so I try to get that done pretty quick. Realistically, if you go to get bits and you buy your uh, eyelets at get spits, they pretty much file down when you buy them. At who? It's called Get Bent Fly Shop in St. Louis. Get Bad? Bent. Get, what? Oh, get Bent? Yeah, Get yeah. Bent. Okay. Go online and look up the stuff, and the stuff is pretty much uh, ready to go. Okay, yeah. These. I mean, I got the guy. I got the stuff from Yield Fly Shop where John had gotten it, and they had a discount with Project Healing Water. Some stuff good. I've had a few twisted eyes, but I mean, they replaced them right away. But some eyes, I've had to file like the backsides down to finally get them to want to lay flat against the rod. You know, I spent an hour last night working on one guide. Finally, got it level enough to. I don't have a point. And I'm right next to the top two sections. You know, the top two uh, guides of a rod. I don't think you want to, you don't want a high pressure point there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you'll cut right through the rod. I'm not talking about breaking rods anymore. <laughs> Why have you never? You oh well, good thing I've I've not broken one, but I don't want to break one. Good luck. Hope you don't. If you do, you're probably right. will. Well, considering I've had a few of the bead heads. Uh, hit into the tip of my rod or a couple other places, I know I'm going to have a rod go to peace on me someday. A good guy, to, you know, uh, uh, John Wright's good to work with. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, there's a guy down here named uh, Bill Kelly, and he's really, really good. And he's mm. been my instructor for three years. Oh, we nice. Built, we, I built like 10 rods so far, so. Oh. I got to build one for a buddy, and I still have my project healing waters rod still to complete, and that's what I'm working on right now. Okay, I was just curious what you all did. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Quite welcome. Okay. So that's all I've got kind of playing nice. around here. <laughs> I don't like it. I'm going to try it over the weekend. That's just a glass bead. So and going to give this a whirl, see if I could strip that in and see if that works. Yeah, well. So I was just messing around. I'm like, I'll give it a try. All right. I think that's it. We're losing people already. They're tired of hearing me speak. So uh, I'll come up with a new fly for next week. Uh, hopefully some good stories and good pictures with fishing. If okay. you guys need anything, just let me know. Okay. And I'll, I'll text you a message. I do have a question for you, Mick. Okay. No worries. Right. You guys have everything. So I will talk to you guys soon. You take care now. Thanks. Bye. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye.